Hello, I'm Denise Durson, Executive Editor of ProBuilder, and my guest today is Kevin Oakley, Managing Partner at Do You Convert, a consulting firm focused on online sales and marketing for home builders and developers. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks so much for having me back, Denise. It's been too long since yes. I've been on Horizon TV. I agree. Uh, my pleasure to have you. Um, the pandemic has caused a lot of change in the housing industry, as we know, not least of which is the possibility of selling homes online. Your article in the July-August issue of ProBuilder highlights some of the benefits of builders being able to connect more with, builder, with buyers online, but you also point out what you call inconvenient truths. Tell us about those. Yeah, they're inconvenient truths. Let's just, why did I pick that word? Because CEOs and management teams don't want them to be true. Uh, we want so desperately to believe that we can automate our way to success and higher margins. And that uh, when we hear stories about innovation and technology pushing things forward, that it should be very easy. And I, I think last time I was on, actually, we talked a little bit about a builder in Austin who, um, as soon as the pandemic hit, the CEO turned to the chief marketing officer and said, okay, you've got 90 days, 90 days to go from a completely static um, website experience to a design, build, add to cart and checkout experience online. And um, now going 14 months into the future, none of that exists. And, uh, and the management team is now on to the next thing to, to focus on. So, so part of this is inconvenient because it requires a lot more energy um, and a lot more complexity than we want to acknowledge. And so the first inconvenient truth is just it, to do buy online we would require a dr drastic simplification of the kind of product we're offering. Now, um, some people read the article and they reached out and said, no, no, you don't understand, Kevin. We've been doing buy online for like 10 years. And what they meant by that was we we have information about our homes on the website and people have seen that, reached out to an online sales team, set appointments, et cetera. But what we're talking about, to be clear here, is the idea of add to cart, insert a credit card or ACH payment and secure um, the home that you have designed or want. The the drastic simplification of the offering comes from looking at things like Tesla, where there's really only five options today if you go on Tesla's website to buy a car, and yet they have sales teams and marketing teams and technology teams and actual showrooms and all of these things to help people make five decisions, I think three of which are paint color, uh, interior color, and um, tire or, uh, color, uh, wheel, wheel color type. So. They're not overly complex decisions to make in comparison to what happens to the second floor of my house when I create an open foyer. Like the average consumer, <laughs> that, right. is a, that is a much more um, difficult thing to explain in a way that they're going to understand. And most builders are not willing to do that. Even, even in today's world where um, because of the surge in interest due to the pandemic, builders have gone to more production oriented uh, styles of building there's still the exponential growth of every one additional floor plan and every one additional pre-priced structural option. The amount of maintenance and system setup required is off the charts. I, I looked at a, a way to try to explain this to people and I don't know the exact numbers off the top of my head, but if a tree, if you planted a tree as sapling and came back to that same tree uh, 30, 40 years later, if it had an exponential growth curve, which is the kind of complexity we add when we add floor plans and options, right. uh, it would be as tall as outer space. It, it would reach reach outer space. So that's obviously not what trees really, really look like. So it's just, and one of the interesting things, Denise, about this is considering that if the market does get more difficult and our price points don't find a way to reduce themselves, the more expensive the offering that we're giving customers, the more they're going to want exactly what they want. And in a down market, we all know that every production builder became a semi-custom custom builder in 08 and 09 to get a sale any way they needed to. So even as we're building these systems, if you stick to that type of oversimplified product, are we all gonna be able to stay there when times get tougher? 
I mean, I would have thought that really that would be the only way you could sell online is if you had, you know, three models and, you know, no options. And maybe then you could. Um, yeah. And even, that's even. the baby step that you can take right now if right. this is still something high on your list is uh, reservations mm -hmm. online. Perfectly fine, because all you're doing is reserving a place. And um, as we've seen by some of the, the way the builders have done this, you're not even promising that that reservation can or will imminently become a transaction. It just allows them to reserve an existing home site or an existing inventory home. The other thing only focusing on inventory allows you to do is to say, this is, it is what it is. There are no options. You cannot change anything. Here's all the detail on this home. If you want to reserve it, reserve an, uh, uh, an option to secure it at a later date. Those are all baby steps that you can take towards getting to, to the buy online nirvana that so many people want. Um, it still leads us to inconvenient truth number two, though, Denise, which is that it requires real-time updates flowing back and forth between a back-end database and the website uh, itself. And the classic example of this that I, that I know um, several of the CMOs at, at National Builders have used with their teams is to say, if, if Denise, the salesperson, just spent two hours sitting down with a customer and they're about to write a contract on a home, and Kevin Oakley just gets online and inputs his credit card. Um, what happens? Whose home is that really? Who's the tiebreaker? Which oh, right. which sales manager is going to win and ultimately that their salesperson or their sales team get that sale? Um, if without that real time update back and forth, um, we're going to create a whole lot more disappointment uh, and set expectations really high that we just are, are going to. And that's part of what makes this so hard to to test right now is in still one of the most active housing markets ever in terms of interest from prospects. Do we really need to go faster without having real time connections between what is truly available and what is on the front end of the website? Yeah, that's and I think I think you'd have um, people unhappy on both sides of that, the buyer and the seller, <laughs> the, you know, the salesperson. If yeah. you had that happen. So uh. yeah. And even when I've, every time I hear anyone going through this process, um, you're immediately mystery shopped by me, <laughs> uh, spoiler alert. And what, what I know is that even when people say, well, our system does stay updated, it's not fully integrated. Meaning in the article, I talk about the fact that I reserved multiple home sites with a single builder okay. in less than 15 minutes. So I reserved one and it said, great, that's yours. And then I just, just clicked on another home site, went through the same process and I could now, it can't be fully integrated when two weeks later, a sales manager or someone from the organization hasn't said, hey, we looked at this chart and Oakley has two or three home sites reserved. Is he really gonna buy two or three? We, we can't withhold inventory just because someone showed passing interest and reserved it online. So And, so, and no one contacted you about any of that? No, all I ever got was, was one uh, email from a sales rep saying, this reservation's pretty much worthless unless you go through and get pre-qualified with a mortgage company, uh -huh. um, sign additional documents. So even though it said reserve online, you haven't reserved anything. But on the builder's site, on the site map, it still showed that site map, that, that home site as being reserved. Hmm. So to the next person who went on the website, didn't get, the, yeah, didn't they didn't get know that's how that. it worked. Yeah. And, um, and so the fact that it has to be integrated all the way down to the sales management salesperson level, not even just um, a back-end amount of selections and option pricing and a front-end website showcasing those things. It's, it's got to be comprehensive from top to bottom. And that leads us to the last inconvenient truth, which is, is, is the most important, I think, and, and that is that humans will need to assist with this process or any process at a moment's notice at any time. We just wrapped up our, our Do You Convert Summit, and, and the way that I said it there was that hybrid is the new black forever. We can't get excited about here's the new way to buy a house from us and say that is the only way you can do it. I'm not sure why um, that became such a, such a fast fascination. In fact, there are builders today who will tell prospects that in order to have an on-site appointment, you must, and that's the weird word about that, you must have a virtual appointment first. Why? Why don't we let those who want to have a virtual appointment have one first as an option yeah. and those who don't, don't need to. And so 
the analogy here is um, all over the place, whether it be self-checkout. Self-checkout lanes would not work if there wasn't a human being who could show up at a moment's notice and help us with problems. And so that's not a single process. It's hybrid all the way. When I'm researching online, do I want help from someone to give me more faster answers? Yes or no. When I, after I reach out and want to schedule an appointment, do I want a salesperson there? Yes or no. Um, and so this obsession on only buy online really distracts from the point that, that every customer is going to want to do things a little bit differently. And we have to be able to accommodate that. And my, my really silly example of that is um, McDonald's built a bunch of these kiosks, uh, self-serve kiosks, and they never get used. And they're, they're, they're slow, they're clunky. My, my daughter used one flying home from Guatemala and, and I mean, she's 12. If she doesn't know how to interface with a touchscreen, something, right? Something's Nobody wrong. does. <laughs> and she somehow managed to order a cheeseburger with no meat and extra lettuce. What? Right, like that. The, the system just doesn't <laughs> that doesn't communicate to their core audience, and and then you've got Chick Fil A who merely said, you know what, uh, we can get uh, really good, uh, happy employees to use 2009 era technology in an iPad, and just like I mean, you, I don't, if you've never if you're watching this, the first time you saw a human being standing outside with an iPad, you thought, what is going on here? And now, now Chick, everyone wants Chick-fil-A to run everything. Can they run the vaccine program? Can they run you know, the Afghanistan relief effort? Whatever Chick-fil-A wants to do. Yeah. And, they, and we were talking about this before we hit record, Denise. They also, Chick-fil-A does not have a recruiting problem. They still, if you are a young person and want to work at Chick-fil-A, there's a waiting list. Wow. Whereas everyone else is looking for employees. And so humans are still the secret ingredient forever uh, in, the, in the foreseeable future here no matter how much technology we have, because there will always be people who want to raise their hand. And that's to put it all in a, in a nice bow and then I'll answer any follow-up questions is the whole point of everything we do around sales and marketing is not to convince the unconvinced it's or the inconvincible. It's simply to make those who have interest in moving forward with you able to do so as easy and as smoothly as possible. And that's, we're starting we're getting overconfident in what happened during the pandemic where we think it was our technology or our shift in, in processes that saved us. And it ended up being that it was mostly just the largest demand surge we've ever seen in a compressed period of time. Right. So we have to go back and really rethink, um, are, are we making this as smooth as possible for a customer in a single digital only framework is, is not where we need to go. Right. I agree with you completely. And the, and the three or so stories that I read where people actually bought houses online, and these were houses, uh, you know, that, that were older, um, mm -hmm. you know, they were probably in the newspaper because that was news. I mean, that was very unusual and, and, yeah. and didn't, didn't happen very often. Um, if well, any and more, and any the, more than the companies, I think we can't lose sight that the companies who are trying to sell this technology to builders uh, want to use the FUD factor, F-U-D, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And, mm -hmm. you know, we talk so much about how our industry is behind. And now that's groupthink. It's like every CEO is saying to every other CEO, yeah, we're all behind here, but I'm not going to be as behind as you are because yeah. I've figured out by online, you know, and there's this, there's this rush to not be the dinosaur of the industry, but it's not focused on the consumer. And that's, that's really where we've lost sight of, we're focused on efficiencies and profit margin and scale, and we've lost keeping the customer at the center of it somehow. So, I mean, I, I can understand, um, you know, having the hybrid, um, I, I think that's, I think you're right about that, that that's how it will probably go. But do, do you, looking ahead, do you think it will actually be possible to, to buy a home online for real? I mean, I know for maybe for me, because I'm, you know, not as young as you are, <laughs> I, I can't really see that, but you think it's possible? I think if if people acknowledge these three truths and really work on it. So at, at our event last week, there was three people who raised their hands and said, in the next six months, they will have a reservation uh, system for home sites online and yeah. functional in the correct way. We'll wait. We'll wait and see, and we'll shop that and let everyone know. Right. Or they said they were going to let inventory homes be purchased uh, online. One of the things that um, 
Redfin's had data for a long time now that 25, 35, 40% of people are, are willing to make an offer on a home they've never seen. Again, this is PR matching or colliding with reality where, where we dig in deeper and what that really means is that they made an offer contingent upon seeing it in person yeah. without seeing it in person. Right. Um, not the same thing. I, I do think we'll get there. I think, um, I, I don't know what that time frame looks like, but you look at how manufactured housing um, is a potential solution, even though Katera, rest in peace, right. uh, couldn't make it work. Um, manufactured uh, housing is a way to solve some of our labor challenges. And the more that we think like manufacturers, maybe we get to the point where someone simplifies their product enough to, to make it work. Yeah. Um, but but again, even in that f that point where the system still works flawlessly, it, it's it's like why are there so many real estate agents? I mean, we've got i buyers, we've got Zillow buy your home, Open Door will buy your home, Offerpad will buy your home. Uh, everyone will buy your home. You don't have to do any repairs. You never have, and yet there's still all these agents. Why? Because at the end of the day, it's a complex decision yeah. that means a lot to individuals who know that it's complicated. And they they need assistance. They need guidance for sure. So humans will be there even after we get to that panacea of buy online. Yeah. Well, it will be interesting to watch how it pans out for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll we'll be following up and continue to, to write more on the topic because it's still. Uh, everyone said two things when we when we talked about this more last week. One was thank you because I'm getting obscene amounts of pressure of why can't we do what this other builder is saying they can do. Mm -hmm. So thank you for shedding a little bit of light on that. Or um, thank you for giving me something to go back to management and explain this really is difficult. It's not a no. It's mm -hmm. a, the changing the text on the button is not getting what you want. And the customer is the ultimate person who gets to vote on it. And, and so hopefully everyone can just take a deep breath get a little bit of patience and long-term thinking and realize if, if we do want to tackle this, um, we're going to have to go longer than 90 days yeah. in our, in our quest for, for getting to that, that end goal. For sure. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to talk about this, Kevin. Anytime, Denise, I'll be here. <laughs>